Hello, um, this is my second clip uh, on preparing for propagating, so in other words talking about bits and pieces you need to know for sowing seed and producing plants from cuttings. Uh, if you haven't seen the first clip it will probably be helpful for you to watch that first because uh, everything will make a bit more sense. Right, so the next thing I was going to talk about is where we're actually going to do all this propagation um, and obviously if you're just producing one or two bits on the windowsill that's entirely fine um, and you can very very successfully do that sort of thing uh, obviously the, the issue there is you haven't got much control on what's going on around you and potentially you haven't got an awful lot of space uh, you also have the issue uh, with windowsills it, it's very one directional light so as soon as things germinate they start going that way so we need to think about that and you'll need to think about keep on turning trays etc to, to make sure that the, the seedlings are actually going straight up. Uh, you can also find that because of the one directional lights um, seedlings can grow quite leggy quite quickly uh, i.e. they grow up far quicker than they should so you don't get a nice stumpy little seedling you can get something that's quite long and straggly uh, which is not a good start in life. So the windowsill is a good place, but if, if you can, you're better off obviously to have a, a small green area of your greenhouse if you're lucky to have a greenhouse or in your conservatory or what have you. Um, moving on from that, one of the, the big issues is with either taking anything from cuttings or with producing plants from seed is temperature uh, and keeping an eye on temperature. You don't necessarily need to have a propagator um, but I have to say that for some subjects you will do an awful lot better with a propagator. But So if you're, if you're growing bits and pieces like peas and beans from seed, that's fine. Grow them in your greenhouse um, or your cold frame or what have you in your trays, no problem at all. Uh, if you're doing long-term hardwood cuttings, so you're taking some cuttings of things like black currants or what have you, once again they don't really need uh, any heat. Um, with those sort of bits and pieces it will help, um, but they don't really need the heat. But if you're thinking of growing things like tomatoes, uh, or chilies, or cucumbers, squashes, those sort of things, you will get some germination, um, provided the temperature is high enough naturally, uh, in, in a situation without a propagator. But I, I have to honestly say that you will not get as good, ger good a germination as you would um, if you invested in a propagator. Um, I'd just like to show you this one, which is actually um, our propagator we use at home. It's the one that we use with the kids. Uh, it's also the propagator that we sell here. Um, and for just over 55 quid, uh, it's, it's what I think is a really, really good value for money propagator. Um, the main issues or the, the main things that you need with the propagator is obviously a heated base. Uh, and some protection, and, and this comes with the propagator, as I say, this is a paracene propagator, or a botanic propagator I think they're called now, this is a few years old. Uh, so it will take two standard seed trays with no problem at all, and you've got these handy little lids that go on top, and they've got openings for ventilation as well. Um, and obviously below, or built into the base, is the heat cable. Um, and I'll talk about the heat cable in a minute, but the other important thing with this is it's got a thermostat. Um, there are cheaper ones on the market without the thermostat, but I have to say that without the thermostat it can be tricky to, to keep the temperature constant, which is what you really need um, when you're producing um, plants from seed. Uh, they need to have, the seed needs a constant temperature and it needs to be the temperature that, you, that they want. Um, so rough guessing isn't an awful lot of use. When you've got something like this, never ever use it empty. It always needs um, a layer of sand in the bottom because obviously the heat cables only run um, a few inches, few centimetres apart so there'll be hot and cold spots so you actually need to build that up so that you get a, an even temperature across the whole base. The other thing I would say um, is well worth doing on top with your propagator is buying yourself a thermometer for it because then you can actually check the temperature and see what's going on. Now um, we've got a variety of thermometers that we use on the nursery. Obviously these little glass ones are quite handy. Uh, probably not great if you're doing a lot of gardening with the kids. 
um, but you can pop one of those in and you can see what's going on. But I personally prefer, and these are the ones that we use on our heated beds, this is one of them here, um, these little um, outdoor indoor thermometers. Um, we don't sell these, but I think they sell for about 10 quid now. Um, and the beauty of this is obviously you've got the little probe that you can put into the compost. Uh, but you can probably also get a temperature of the greenhouse or whatever as well so you, you can get the two temperatures and you don't have to interfere with it. Um, the reason for needing one of these is obviously the dial on the front only gives you a temperature of 1 to 10. Um, if you've got a proper heated bed, we've got heated beds here on the nursery, um, behind us obviously we, we have more than um, one tray at a time so all these beds are heated. Uh, and obviously we have light as well, which we'll talk about in a minute. But um, those beds are heated and they're on proper thermostats. But we still use these because obviously that thermostat is working on the temperature at the bottom and it's not working at the temperature of the grow zone. So you can find, for instance, on our beds that we run um, the thermostat about three degrees higher, three to four degrees higher than we actually want the temperature of the compost because you lose the temperature as you come up so they're handy for being really really accurate um, and once again not a huge amount of money and if you think that in a propagator like this you can have one two three four eight varieties of tomato seed for instance at one time um, potentially a couple of pounds a packet so you could have 16 pounds worth of seed in here at one time and if if you actually get that germination on those 16 quids worth of seed as opposed to only getting a few seedlings from here and there you'll find that a propagator will pay for itself very very quickly um, so that's it with propagators um, spend the money if you have it um, because they are so worthwhile and you you will get so much more benefit from them so if you can imagine, um, I've now sewn a few bits and pieces, uh, I haven't actually obviously, and I've put them into my propagator, uh, and the final concern really is light. Um, and that's more of a concern at this time of year, we're in January, uh, and will be a concern through the winter months, because obviously the, the day length is shorter. Um, and without good light you tend to end up with very long elongated seedlings, leggy seedlings, uh, which once again is not the best start in life so you need to provide some good light now there are quite a few um, propagation lights on the market and quite a lot of them are, are, are very expensive uh, here on the nursery we actually use just normal fluorescent strip lights we have those over our heated beds and they work perfectly well um, we run those not right through the whole night they go off at about two o'clock in the morning so they, they come on about three um, in the afternoon just as it's starting to dull down and they go on until about two and we find they w work perfectly adequately um, and similarly I think in, a, in an amateur situation whether you're using a propagator or you're, you're, you're doing your, your seedling production just on, on the greenhouse bench I think light is very very important uh, and one thing I've found um, this is actually our one from home for when we're doing bits and pieces at home this is one of these work lights that you um, can buy in builders merchants and DIY shops um, and they're fantastic and it wants to be about there like that um, and the light from that will be perfectly adequate for this size uh, of propagator and in actual fact for about a seed tray all the way round so you're going to get around about eight seed trays from this single light and you will be amazed how much better quality plants you will produce just with this little light and I think these are about 25 pounds something like that um, and it's a 38 watt tube in there so it's not going to drink lots and lots of electricity and energy either so once again it's spending money but if you're if you're producing lots and lots and bits and pieces there's something that I really would recommend you doing so that's light really covered. So now I'd just like to talk a little bit about um, the actual practicalities of seed sowing. So we've got one of our trays here filled up with our fresh compost. Uh, and the first thing to do is obviously to pat it down. I've got a trusty temper here. Uh, and I'm literally just going to firm it, not too hard, because obviously we need to keep that drainage in the compost. So firm that down a little bit. Um, and as I say, with the drainage, another important thing is the actual drainage of the tray. So this is a seed tray and has obviously got very, very good drainage. But if you're using something like one of these meat trays or what have you, 
um, you do need to think about that and get some drainage holes into the bottom. Um, so we've actually filled the tray, uh, we firmed it down and now we would physically do the sewing uh, across the surface. Uh, and then from there, the next thing is the seed will either need covering or it won't. Um, now some seed doesn't need to be covered, some seed does. Uh, so check on our website for the individual instructions um, or check on our green leaflet. And obviously if you're buying from elsewhere, uh, you should be able to find that information. Um, and seeds will need different coverings. So in some cases, it's fine to literally just get the compost. Um, and spread across the surface so that you're covering to the depth that is required. Once again, as I say, you really do need to, to check that you're covering to the correct depth um, because obviously if you over cover, there's a chance that the seed won't actually be able to push its way out and find its way out. So for, for deeper coverings, you can just gently cover over to exclude the light with the compost like this. But obviously if you're literally just looking for a dusting, you're better to use something like a sieve. Um, this is our big sieve here and obviously we sell a sieve as well. And doing like this you can get just a very, very, very fine layer. So it is literally just the dust to exclude the light from the seed. Um, which is perfect for, as I say, stuff that literally just needs covering. And then the final thing that you may or may not have to do, once again just check that information, will be to firm it. Um, some seed will if you firm, it'll obviously bring the seed back into contact with the compost nicely. Uh, and some things it's a good idea to firm, but not, not all. Um, particularly as well if you're just dusting the, the compost over the top and the compost is a little bit damp, then if you put the firmer down, you can actually pick up the, the seed on the damp compost and muck everything up basically. But so, if I'm going to firm this, and obviously this is a half and half tray, half done with the with the sieve and half done by hand, so a little bit of a mess. But then all I would literally do is just again a gentle tap firm, and that's done, and that's ready to go on the bench and be watered. So all that needs doing now with my imaginary tray of, of seed uh, is it needs watering. So we'll pop it onto the bench, and this is one of our big heated benches, so this is heated underneath. Um, and the, the trick here is that we keep the watering cans that we use a filled up um, and B we keep them on the bench so the water in the can is at the same temperature as the bench. Um, this is particularly important when the seedlings have germinated and, and are just underway um, because like you and me um, they don't want to go from cold to hot to cold to hot. Um, so we keep the water at the same temperature that they are um, but obviously I'm, I'm watering this tray uh, of just sown um, seed and what I'll do in that case is I'll actually start the water over here and then bring it across so I don't get a huge pool anywhere and just water like that and that's fine. And you just need to keep that compost on the moist side, that's all, not sopping wet. Um, and as I say, watering is a critical issue, um, so don't overwater, you just end up with damping off. But don't let the compost dry right over and you'll soon see it cracking if there is a problem there. Then all we need to do, obviously, is just cover. Uh, a bit like the little propagator I was showing you, we, we do things slightly bigger. Um, so a sheet like this will go on and it'll be covered. And end of this week coming, this whole bed will actually be filled up. We've just got to clean it out uh, and give it a clean down. And then we, we start sewing uh, on Monday. So uh, that's it, really. So I'd like to think that's helped everyone with all the bits and pieces, uh, particularly with regard to sewing. Um, obviously I haven't spoken too much about propagation from cuttings but a lot of what I've said does go on with that as well uh, and possibly I'll do a clip later on in some hardwood uh, cuttings etc. So that's it really.